Welcome to the NVC 14 kickoff, everyone. Stay tuned. We are going to get started here in just about two minutes. How's it going, everyone? Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us for this year's virtual New Venture Challenge kickoff event. I'm Michael Marcu. I'm a senior. I'm the president of the Startup Club. I'm a member of the Innovation Action Team, and I'm one of your hosts here tonight. So what do we have in store for you? Tonight, we'll hear from some, from some student and community entrepreneurs and get you all the details about NVC. That's going to include what you need to know to participate, to win money, and what you can learn along the way. First off though, I'd love to introduce you to the two people who make NVC possible. Brad Bernthal, who many of you already know, he's our NVC faculty, faculty director. Hey Brad. Awesome to be here. And uh, this is always one of my favorite nights, even if we're not in the same room, it's gonna be fun. Thanks for having me. And we've got Tara O'Brien, who is our brand new NVC program director. Hey Tara. Hey Michael, good to see everybody tonight. Sweet, Tara, what do you have to get us started? Well, like I said, I am super, super stoked to see so many participants here with us tonight. This is a really great showing. We have a really fun lineup full of information. So be ready to take some notes and grab some links when we drop them in the chat box tonight. We're gonna talk about what in the heck is NBC and why do we do it and why should you do it? And we're gonna hear from some CU Boulder students, some alumni entrepreneurs and their quick elevator pitches, which is gonna be a ton of fun. Also all the details you need to know about the NBC program itself. We're also gonna talk about what everybody wants to hear about, which is the competition and uh, championships coming up next year and where you all fit in. So. We're going to have sign up links, next steps. We're going to have Q&A. You're going to learn how to build an idea. So for those of you that don't have one already, that's going to be really helpful. And at the end of the show, we're going to have a ton of time for Q&A from all of you. So let me just break in really quick with the logistics of how this is going to work on Zoom. Um, tonight, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you're going to see a Q&A box. That Q&A box is for all of you attending to throw your questions for all of us into so we can get to them at the end of the show with the help of Mallory. If you look at the other button, which is for the chat box, we're gonna use the chat box specifically to bookmark some links that you can take away and use at the end of the show to register and sign up for key events, okay? so. Let's practice really quick before we get into this um, and use that chat box feature. So we'll be putting links in here, but what I wanna do first is I wanna know where everybody is tuning in from. 
So whether you're in Colorado, let us know, throw in the chat box right now. Where are you tuning in from tonight? Boulder, I would imagine we've got people up in the mountains. Oh, I like this. Okay. Are you outside? Anybody outside of, oh, wow. Yep. Anybody in Hawaii? Anybody outside of Colorado? Great. Keep them coming. It's good to see where everybody's at. Also, start throwing in there, where are you from tonight in the sense of what is your degree program if you're a student joining us? If you are in the community or you're a mentor, let us know what it is that you do. Where do you work? Um, I like that. You're not in Scotland. Good. Good to know. Um, where, where are you guys working? What's, what are you studying in school? And if you are faculty or staff joining us tonight, what do you teach? What part of the school are you in? Oh, great. A lot of computer science law students, applied math. This is great. I love to see this because this is a cross campus event and to have you all here is perfect. All right, keep those going in the chat box and I'm gonna get started by showing you all some of the key dates that will be coming up in the near future. Registration, I am thrilled to announce, is now open for the new Venture Challenge 14 competitions. So if you go to our website and you will see these put in the chat box for you, and you can register your idea, you can register your company, and you can register your team now. If you're not ready to do that, that's okay. We'll talk about that. Big events att to attend coming up in November are the Ideas Generator and the Ideas Validator events. First one is on November 5th. We're gonna get into the details of that a little bit later. And of course, the entire NVC program, which starts tonight, culminates on April 13th with the NVC 14 championships. So you're probably wondering if you're new to all of this, who is NVC for? Well, all of you, you can see where you're coming from and what parts of the university or community you're from. It's for all of you. It's for anyone really that wants to solve a problem, any problem out in the world. You can bring people in from outside of CU to work on your idea or to work on your teams. But I will throw out the caveat that you have to do one rule there. At least one founding member on your team working on your idea has to be a CU ID card holder. Other than that, it's for everyone, faculty, staff, students, and community. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of everything, Brad, you have been doing this forever. Tell us, jump in and talk about what really makes up the core essence of NVC. Yeah, I love what you just did there in terms of using the chat, uh, Tara. And um, this, the not in Scotland reference came because someone, and I believe it's a, a sort of summer participant, is zooming in from Scotland. I was trying to think of what time it must be. They're probably like at 2 a.m. You know, this is, this is a good night in Scotland right now. So awesome to have you with us. Um, and also seeing a lot of old friends who are, who are here, some who are other faculty member, Jeff Nitch, a longtime friend who's been um, involved in the New Venture Challenge going back to the beginning, um, is on, and, uh, and many mentors. And as we'll talk about, uh, mentorship is a huge part of the NBC. Um, getting to the essence of this, some of you uh, in the way of newcomers, here's how I'll distill it. Some of you have an idea for a company. The NBC is for you. Others don't have an idea for a company, have really no place to start. And my message to you is the NBC is also for you. Um, I've been at CU now for 15 years and the NBC is as good as anything as, that I've been involved with on the campus outside the classroom. This is really a special event. Um, and the reason that it's special is the New Venture Challenge turns the classroom inside out. And here's what I mean by that. In the traditional classroom, the professor sets the agenda. The professor creates the syllabus. The professor directs the lecture, okay? In the New Venture Challenge, you choose your adventure. You decide the problem that's worth tackling. You and your team determine the solution. You form a team to launch something new. 
And this is a cross-campus miracle. Look at the, uh, the chat and you see that this is the types of people that we always say they should be in the room together, but they don't get together outside of football and basketball games. And we ain't getting together in football and basketball games this year. So we're gonna do it through the new venture challenge. Um, additionally, we have a world-class startup scene at our front door in Boulder and really throughout the Front Range community. And the new venture challenge is gonna connect you to that scene. So what the NBC is, is a platform that mobilizes resources in the service of the problem that you want to work on. It's the classroom inside out. It's where you move from a PowerPoint presentation to doing it in the real world. It's where you move from, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we did this, to actually building that in the real world. The NBC is a platform that mobilizes resources to help you take on the project in the dream that matters most to you. It is a fabulous experience. Um, and that to me is the essence of what the NBC magic is about. Back to you, Tara. I love that. Thanks, Brad. And I, you know, of course, once we get on, I take a sip of water and I'm choking on it. So Michael saved me if I lose my voice here. Um, I wanna remind everybody really quick before we get going, for those of you just tuning in, look down at the bottom of your screens and see the Q&A box. This is the perfect place for you to throw your questions into and we will get to them at the end of the show tonight. So we have all of your key NBC info, key dates, all of that coming up soon, so hang tight. First, I wanna talk about what it really means when you get involved with the New Venture Challenge. At its core, this is, like I said before, people solving problems. When you look at this screen that's being shared with you here, these, these are problems and one of them, uh, many of them very close to home, but the fires in Colorado. How do we solve these problems? And when we get students and faculty and staff and incredible community members together, we bring different skill sets, incredible ideas. We bring people with passion into fixing these problems and we really start to make a huge impact on society and on our world. And this is what the New Venture Challenge is about. We are going to throw into the chat box right now any kind of ideas or problems that come to your mind. Maybe you're working on solving a problem. Maybe you have an idea that you're not sure about. Maybe looking at this picture with problems of fires and education and COVID-19, maybe something sparks in your brain. Throw it in the chat so that we can all see and kind of start opening our minds and brainstorming on fixing problems. So listen, whether you're innovating already or you think you might wanna start, but you're not sure how to get started, you're totally in the right place, like Brad said. Right now, I actually wanna break and let's meet some people that have started on this innovation journey. Some of them have been doing it for a while. Some of them are a little bit new at it. And a lot of them have competed in NBC before. Michael? Cool. Thank you, Tara. Um, I do want to second everything that was just said. Um, I've been through NBC twice. Totally agree with everything there. But yeah, let's, uh, let's move on. So tonight I'm going to introduce you to a handful of CU students and alums um, who have volunteered to share the ideas that they're working on. Each of them will have 75 seconds to pitch their company, idea, or product. We're gonna ask them a question or two afterwards. Now we have a timer and Tara will jump in when those 75 seconds are up. So here we go. First up, we got Dan Strangfeld. Dan is the co-founder and CEO of KegStand. He participated in Catalyze CU this year and he's one of three finalists for the eSpirit competition coming up next month, which he needs more community votes for. Dan, the floor is yours. All right. Thanks, Michael. Hey, everybody. My name is Daniel, and I am the co-founder and CEO of KegStand, where we are reinventing the traditional keg to help lower distribution costs for brewers. Um, and so currently on this market, there's two main keg options. There's a stainless steel one, which probably most of you have seen at the college parties. Um, and these are really heavy, and they drive up distribution prices like crazy. On the other hand, there's a the plastic keg, which is lightweight, but it's really unsafe and it doesn't maintain beer quality whatsoever. Um, so our solution, we're utilizing COPV technology, which is used in the natural gas industry to create a keg that is 40% lighter. It is just as safe and maintains beer quality just as well as any steel keg. 
And on average, brewers can save $2.50 for every single keg that they ship of ours. So far, we've been starting uh, in Colorado craft breweries, such as our customer Flight Co. Brewing, and then we're moving into the larger $10 billion beer keg market. And the reality is this is not just a play on breweries, it is a play on beverages. If you've ever had nitro brew coffee that is transported in kegs, if you've ever had a soda, the syrup to make those is transported in kegs. That's why we are positioning ourselves as the world's first and industry leading COPV beverage solution. Thank you. Wow, nice, nailed it literally at 75 <laughs> seconds. That is a good one, Dan, way to go. Thank you. Um, I, I totally wanna open it up if uh, if Brad, Michael, you guys have questions, let's, let's dig in and Dan, how did you, dare I even ask, how did you come up with this idea back in the day? <laughs> um, yeah, great question. It was actually come up with in Jacob Siegel's class in a class in engineering um, in the fall of 2019, which I'm sure some of you guys on this call are in Siegel's class. And one of our original co-founders, his dad was, uh, he owns a few breweries in Iowa. And he said, biggest problem is the weight of the keg. So then we kind of stumbled into it of, hey, how can we solve this? And we eventually have gotten to where we are today with a COPV. Dan, I will ask a quick question, which is, um, if you could go back to talk to yourself at the start of your venture about knowing now what you know about resources on campus or in the community, what would you have liked to have known several years ago when you were just getting going? Oof, um, I would have to bring that back to even before this venture, because I've tried a few ventures and. Uh, you know, <laughs> learn my lessons. But I'd say the number one thing that I've learned in startups is that your relationships and your skills to build and maintain relationships is the most critical thing, um, both externally to your team and also internally to your team, because ultimately that has been what has created the most momentum in our company is the relationships that we've been able to build with each other and also externally to investors, to advisors, customers, whatever it be. Yeah, startups are such little things. No one goes it alone. You need a ton of outside help. Yeah, so I'd say don't be afraid to shoot an email or shoot a text to anyone, no matter how high up they are, or how successful they are. Just just reach out, They're, they'll help you out. Thanks, Dan. Next up, Michael. Totally. Next up, we have uh, Chris Stamper, whose company was formed by two PhD students and two professors. They took third in the NVC competition last spring. Tell us what you're doing, Chris. Hello, everybody, and thanks for having me. I'm a co-founder and CEO of Mycobacteria Therapeutics Corp. And we are developing novel bacteria isolated from soil to help with reducing symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. PTSD is typically associated with military personnel. However, it affects 10 times more civilians than military car accidents, sexual trauma, and treating terminally ill COVID patients can all lead to PTSD. Unfortunately, the best treatment for PTSD only works in five out of every 10 patients. Our company was formed around the research of two CU professors that developed these novel bacteria for the treatment of PTSD. We were recently awarded over $800,000 from the National Institutes of Health and the state of Colorado to further develop our bacteria. We've established relationships with the top five major supplement distributors who are highly interested in our product. They report that using supplements for mental health is a rapidly emerging market. And PTSD is an $8.3 billion market worldwide with 4.2 billion of that being in the US alone. So in closing, the need is clear, the market is ready. Uh, will you help us treat PTSD? Brilliant, nice job, Chris. Um, you, you made note to the fact that you guys had some money that came in, but it's not just some money, it's a pretty hefty amount of money that you got in grants. Can you talk to that? And, and what do you have to say to people that are starting out on their ventures about potentially looking for outside money to help with these amazing kind of ideas? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Cause um, I mean, fortunately we're all academics and so we have experience in grant writing, come from um, the research of two professors that have gotten uh, millions of dollars uh, through the NIH to fund their research. And so since we had that experience, that really gave us a leg up in, in applying for these grants, even though they were for small businesses. And, um, and I would encourage everybody to look into these grants. They're, the state of Colorado gives grants, the NIH gives grants, and these are for small startups. 
Um, and, and you can get free money, non-diluted money from these grants. And it's a really good resource to look into and also never be discouraged. You might as well submit a grant. Um, we were told by several people, um, these grants are highly competitive. You probably won't get them. They're, they may not be worth your time. We submitted them and we got them and look at us, we're $800,000 um, in, in the black. So it's pretty great. A uh, quick piggyback question, Chris, which is, um, well, first of all, just an observation that you guys are onto an impact company, right? Where there is a mission to help people that is going along with a profit motive. And ideally you're able to, to have both of those as you're going forward. Reflecting on the new venture challenge in your experience last year, what was the best thing or two that you got out of the NBC experience? I mean, the NBC experience is just is beneficial all around. Um, I think that for us, since we were a pretty, pretty new company, um, we hadn't had a lot of experience with pitching. We hadn't ha put a lot of time into, uh, into developing our pitch. And so just in, in the pitch itself and, and being able to explain what our company is to people um, was extremely beneficial. So I think that was probably the most, uh, the most beneficial thing. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, let's get into our uh, third pitch for the evening um, with Chase Dudas, who is the co-founder and COO of a company called Zero In. Chase and his co-founder, David, competed in the NVC last year, and they made it to the second round. They were also recently accepted into Boulder's own Boomtown Accelerator. Chase, talk to us about Zero In. Awesome. Thank you for the intro. Well, um, I'm actually co-founder and CEO of Zero In. Um, and what we do is create a virtual check-in and queue platform for health and environment. COVID has created a lot of problems in medical workflows. And the most problematic being how patients check in at the front desk. Um, I think without a physical lobby to wait in, there's a lot of confusion around arriving for an appointment. Um, worrying if you're on time, stressing about if you need to stay in the car, visit the front desk, um, or if the front desk even knows that you're here yet. Um, and the worst part too, is that every location's process is different. Our team wants patients to focus on more important things like actually talking to their doctor. So to solve this problem for COVID, we give offices, hospitals and health systems alike a virtual check-in platform. Our platform gives you the ability to check in online using your phone, receive a confirmation message that the front desk knows you've arrived. And when the doctor is ready for you, uh, receive a phone follow-up message saying you can come in now. Um, as we grow to more locations, our team has some very exciting features in our roadmap, like giving patients the ability to check in using a face ID, uh, check in with a smile, like I, um, as I like to say. Um, our team is setting up the necessary groundwork for a very robust platform. And Chase, I'm gonna to break in the there. Way we as patients, no worries. No, no, good, you covered the meat of it. Um, I, I, I'm thrilled to see you on here tonight. And the thing that I think about with what you guys have gone through with your product since leaving NBC, I mean, you're actually getting some good traction out in the Colorado community right now with this product, but you didn't start off that way. You started off with a, a, an idea and a name, the name changed, the idea changed, you, you pivoted, yeah. which is a big word in entrepreneurship. <laughs> and then COVID came along and changed everything for you. Can you talk about like, what does that feel like? And what advice would you give starting out entrepreneurs when they get frustrated with all the changes and pivots they have to make sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, like you said, I think not being afraid of the word pivot. I think a lot of us come up with great ideas. Um, and as things happen like COVID, like we had no idea this was going to hit. So um, being able to just kind of think on your feet and be able to kind of rally back and and be able to adjust yourself and, and be able to put things, you know, if you want to stick to your goal, like put it out in the, the future roadmap, like lay the groundwork now that you need to lay to get there in the future. And I think that's something we can all rally behind. Super cool. Oh, Brad, you got uh, my, a question? Well, I'm sorry, I'm slow taking off mute, but I, I do. Michael said it nicely. He said, you reached the second round of the NBC, that's another way of saying you lost, right? You didn't go as <laughs> you wanted and you were probably ticked off that you're like, what, what happened here? 
Talk about resiliency and taking things forward when you know you, you got started, didn't get maybe the result you were looking for, but resiliency in connection with building a company. Yeah, resiliency is the word there. Um, I think taking failures as success is a great way to think about it. I think a lot of the times you'll run into failures, but it's the ability to bounce back and really kind of learn from those failures. Um, and I know that's said a lot, but really like thinking hard, lay it out on paper if you need to, um, do it the way that works best for you, but taking those failures, iterate on them and figure out for next time how you can be better. And uh, Love it, quick point question, system. quick answer if you have it. What did you learn what, what, from that failure? What, what, what's one thing you learned? You know, I learned to, to roll with the punches. I think, um, especially with COVID, I think I learned that, you know, the things that you think will happen right away probably won't happen right away. So the ability to kind of work in small increments, um, I think has, has worked successfully for us. So love the direction you're going with this chase. This is cool. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, I'm, uh, you know, right there with you. I've, like I said, tried the competition twice now. So, uh, for me, at least, third time's a charm. Let's go. Um, but anyways, thank you to all three, three of you for braving the fear of public speaking and sharing the awesome things you're working on. Um, we're all very sorry you had to miss a pitch that we had lined up from Sarah Hecht. She had to bail on us at the last minute as she's got a little side hustle as a surgeon. And against our best effort, she reported that it wouldn't be appropriate for her to zoom in from the ER. Um, but yeah, each of your ideas got started because you saw a problem in the world that you wanted to fix. I know because I'm doing the same thing right now with my own company. We all have ideas and with a little coaching, they can turn into valuable startups. The new Venture Challenge program will literally help you from scratch with all of that. Not to mention that after you get your coaching, you'll be able to compete next spring for your chance to win a lot of money. Tara will be back soon to give you those details, so stick around. Right now, though, we'll check back in with our NVC faculty director, Brad Bernthal. NVC is actually entering its 13th year, and Brad has been a major part of NVC since its inception. He's also been an active member of the innovation and entrepreneurship community at CU. Brad's going to share more with us on the history and inspiration behind the new Venture Challenge program and competition. Thanks. So um, the, I'll, I'll address the probably the most obvious question, which is, if this is year 13, why is this NVC 14? Uh, and the answer is, do you really want to risk doing number 13 in the year 2020? I, I just think that would be uh, tempting fate one too many times. So we're like a hotel in Vegas. We're just going to go ahead and skip on over to, to NVC 14, which is kind of the spirit of the way that we've always run the new venture challenge. Um, I want to say something that's a little bit off script before I, I get into talking about why the NVC might be for you in terms of getting involved. And that is, um, this is gonna be different than the previous 12 incarnations of the NVC. Um, doing this by remote during the pandemic is gonna be challenging at times. And all of you who are on here, all 163 participants have a role to help us make this great. Uh, to reach out to Tara and provide feedback. Hey, this is working, that was fabulous. This didn't work for me, could we maybe make a switch? And so that is how we have made the NBC better over the years. And I can't think of a year in which the NBC has ever been more important. I feel it on the campus, the ability to feel connected to see you is not as easy in a remote world as it is when we're all together in the same room. And the NVC is precisely the kind of thing that will give you a sense of purpose, that will give you a sense of the community on campus, and will give you a sense of the community off campus and the people who want to help. I haven't done a, a full list of the chat, but I see, you know, Bing is on this call, F is on this call, Tim Hill, longtime mentor, Kirk Holland. I mean, these are people who have been in the entrepreneurial community for 15 plus years and have a ton to share with you. And so I strongly encourage you to take advantage of it. This is precisely the kind of thing that can make this difficult year much more satisfying and meaningful for everybody. So with that, I'm gonna go back onto the script and ask, um, can we show the goats? Uh, all right, so a little bit about the NBC. And I wanna start with, uh, 
you know, I, I believe that show don't tell is so much better. And here is showing you expand your mind about what counts as a venture. Early on in the NVC, we had a law student that's Tabor Ward there in the upper left being nuzzled by a goat. Uh, and she wanted to start a goat farm here in Boulder. And she used the NVC as the platform to launch this idea. And here we are in 2020, Tabor grew the goat farm, uh, put a nonprofit around it, not a for-profit company, a nonprofit around it. She has handed it over to other leadership. And we today still have the mountain flower goat dairy. This belongs in the New Venture Challenge just alongside the other companies that you've seen. Next slide, please. All right, so there are three core purposes of the NVC, and I'm gonna give you a little story around each of them. The first is collapse the campus. The NVC brings together all corners of the campus. Jeff Nitch in the music school, I mentioned already. Engineering, arts and sciences, law, business, everybody participates and plays in the NVC if you've got a CUID. This is a company called Melinda. Melinda, upper left, uh, was founded by, and I think that Phil self-identifies as a geek himself, Phil Tayton, a geek out of chemistry, was doing a PhD. Uh, he met me at a subway and he said, I've got this new type, I'm working with a professor, and we've got this new type of way of molding plastic. And we can do it more cheaply with fewer environmentally harmful ingredients. Is there a company here? I said, I have no idea, but let me make some introductions to you. And the guy to the right is Chris Kafer. Chris was doing a PA, excuse me, an MBA over in the business school. And, and I introduced uh, Chris and Phil. And lo and behold, they built this company called Melinda, which is in fact commercializing that idea of a better way to mold plastics. Um, they have raised money. They've gone through an accelerator program. And today, Melinda is a real company that comes precisely out of that first goal, collapse the campus. Get people with different skill sets together and see the magic that occurs, okay? I mentioned at the outset that if you don't have an idea, the NVC is for you. Please stay engaged. We'll have some opportunities for you to meet people who do have ideas and are looking for other team members. And then you can work with Tara and others on our team to, find a, to try to find an idea that might be a good fit for you. Next slide, please. Purpose number two of the NVC is to connect town and gown. That is to connect CU Boulder to the world-class startup scene that is out our front door. Okay, and here I'm gonna tell you the story of what was at the time Varsity. Varsity was led by two co-founders and about seven others. Uh, at bottom there left is Devin Tavona and Leanne was his co-founder to the, uh, the top left. And they, through the New Venture Challenge, met several mentors in the community, some of whom we introduced them to. We thought we introduced them to three or four mentors. When they won the NVC, when they came through, there were about 30 mentors that stand up and stood up and said, I helped them. First of all, success as many mothers and fathers, but also it underscores the point that was made earlier. No one goes it alone in the world of entrepreneurship. You have this tiny little venture. You're going to need all sorts of help from outside the boundaries of your company. Mentors are people who are volunteering their time, who have been through it, who have some sort of functional specialty, and we mobilize a network of mentors in the community that are here to help you get underway. What happened to Pana, or I should say Varsity, after they left? They went into the Techstars program. Oh, by the way, one of their mentors is here at the right. Um, that is Sue Heilbronner, who they met. Uh, Sue continued to mentor them after the NVC into Techstars when they changed their company and their idea, another pivot, to Native. And then they left Techstars and they changed again and became a company called Pana. Um, and Sue became a member of their board and a very close uh, advisor to the company. Devin is currently CEO of Pana. They raised about $10 million in outside funding a couple of years ago from Bessemer, one of the world's leading VC firms. And uh, this is such a fabulous story. Oh, see, Susan, I love, I love this. This is a 
this is kind of a wow. So Sue just chatted and said, hey, they're mentor me now, uh, which is actually a really interesting point that uh, mentors will often tell you, I get involved, but this is going to be a bi-directional relationship. And um, Devin is just a, a fantastic individual. And I know that that's turned out to be a, a genuine friendship. So goal number two, connect town and gown. Next slide, please. All right, so I mentioned three goals for the New Venture Challenge. Collapse the campus, connect town and gown, and three, inspire the next generation of entrepreneurs. It's hard to build a new venture. This is a real challenge. Um, and if you get involved in the New Venture Challenge, know that there's also part of this, is it's a beauty contest, right? We don't know um, who's got the best idea as an empirical matter. We don't know who's got the kind of hustle and resilience that they're just going to stick with it until they find a business model that works. We make guesses this year. And I'm going to tell you the story of Fletcher Richmond, who was a three-time loser in the New Venture Challenge along the way. Uh, Fletcher had companies that included um, music fly. He had another one that was sort of a magic glove that would be used by DJs at shows where he could control the lights and the music in the same glove. It was a fabulous idea with like no market whatsoever. Uh, and he had a third company that also did not win the NVC. So what be what became of three-time NVC loser, and I'm gonna put that in quotes, Fletcher Richmond. Fletcher went on to join the startup community worked in some companies, including a company called Pivot Desk, left that to start his own company, co-founded with Comron called Help. You see that shirt to the left. They worked for about four years to build Help into a real company. And just this last summer, they sold Help for a very nice outcome to Atlassian. Fletcher ain't no loser, man. He was just learning with each company along the way uh, the inspiration and support of the New Venture Challenge certainly helped uh, at CEU. We'll claim you anyway. Fletcher may well have become a successful entrepreneur without the NBC, but I can tell you this, he got full use out of this platform and he learned with each iteration. Each year he got better. And I think that played an important role in helping uh, Fletcher succeed. So uh, let's go ahead and kill the slides, please. Uh, I'll, I'll close with this. So first of all, um, why might you want to get involved in this? I'll just say this. First, there are great career paths in the entrepreneurial company uh, and community with startups and emerging companies. This may be a great move for you after CU. Furthermore, even if you don't go into startups or emerging companies, my message to you is this. We are all entrepreneurs now. Whether you're a grad student, staff, or a student, it is very unlikely that you're going to go into a job that you keep for the next 30 years. You're going to be in position for a couple of years. The industry is going to change. You're going to have to navigate uncertainty, make choices about your career path, and solve problems just like entrepreneurs do. And so I think this is a very compelling way to get involved in something big that's fun to do this year, uh, that could give you a chance to find a job in the entrepreneurial community afterwards or start your own company, and finally develop skills that in a world where we're all entrepreneurs now are going to be valuable during the course of your lifetime. So that's my case as to why I think the NBC is fabulous as an opportunity. I hope you'll consider it. And if you get involved, looking forward to working with you now. Back to you, Michael and Tara. Cool. Thank you, Brad. Um, I just want to say one thing, like some of the people he brought up, you know, they, these are accessible entrepreneurs like I myself have met and learned from Fletcher on multiple occasions. He's helped, uh, he's helped me plan some of our, our like uh, i &E events on campus. So like that just adds like a whole nother level. Um, NVC, like, you know, even if you win or you don't win or you leave campus, like everyone's still around at some point. But Let's get back to it. We're going to meet some more uh, entrepreneurs, get some more pitches. And for real, this is my favorite part of the night. You know, I just love hearing everyone's ideas, um, you know, what they're going to have ready for the NVC competition in April. And uh, first up, we have uh, Zaina Piper. Zaina is now a software consultant at Oracle in California. But when she was a student at CU, she built a company called Friends. Zaina, tell us about it. 
So my name is Zainab Paper, and I'm the CEO and founder of Friends. Your daughter's, sister's, or friend's college experience should be as safe as it is exciting. And yet, during a normal academic year, over 1.2 million students report being involuntarily drugged during their college experience. Now, this is a particularly crazy with respect to the idea that we know from the hundreds of interviews and surveys that we did that 80% of students know about some kind of date rape drug testing kit that they could use, but yet less than 1% of them have ever actually used one. And Friends knows why. It's because what students need is a device that's discreet, easy to use, and accurate, something they can't find on the market right now which is why we've created Check Please, a small phone attachment that has embedded inside of it three distinct date rape drug testing kits that report the top six date rape drugs with 99.3% accuracy. If you wanna know more about Friends or see what we're doing right now, please email me at zaina.peeper at friendsllc.com. Thank you. Zaina, it is awesome to see you again and welcome back to see you. Um, talk a little bit about the choice as to after the new venture challenge that you've made in terms of, I don't know, I won't ask in terms of whether there was debt to, there's debt to be paid off, but uh, the choice between whether to take forward your startup experience or whether to do something else. And as you're working in software right now, what about the NVC is paying off for you or, or what informs your current work? So first question first, there were a lot of decisions right after NVC. We were in as we are still are in the middle of a pandemic where students aren't supposed to be seeing really anybody. You know, obviously in Boulder, there was even a mandate on the number of people you could see between the ages of 18 and 22. So it wasn't really the right time for us to do user testing and trials with people um, for fear of encouraging them to go party. So Friends is on a bit of a pause right now during the pandemic, um, but the money that we received from um, our NBC experience is right now sitting in a bank account accruing interest so that when we're ready to start back up and the pandemic is over, we have the ability to do that. Um, cool. So so no fear, did not go to student loans. It's it's sitting there ready for friends when friends is ready for it. NBC um, experience, has that paid off at all in terms of your, your current job? Definitely. So I'm a, a business software consultant right now, working with um, a variety of different firms, some of which are engineering firms, which is my background. And the idea that I started a business before adds a lot of credibility for these, these adults, these CEOs, these C-suite executives that I'm advising as a consultant and I'm 23. Um, and so the idea that they feel like I understand what's happening in their business, I understand how a business works, how they make money, how those processes work, adds a lot of confidence to them and it makes my implementations way smoother. All right, well, um, I will leave aside some of the bizarre parts of the consulting profession where you're you're advising now uh, and, and make a bold prediction. Uh, I think you're gonna come back to entrepreneurship down the road and I can't wait to see what you build, Zaina. It was a delight to work with you here last year and I really appreciate you coming back. Thank you, thanks for inviting me. Michael, what do we got next? Cool, yeah, thank you, Zaina. Um, next up, we have Rohan Baisha with Pair Virtual Stylus. Rohan is a senior studying computer science at CU. He made it to the semifinals of the NVC competition this past year. Rohan, tell us about Pair. All right, hello everybody. My name's Rohan, I'm the CEO of Pair Virtual Stylus. And a fun fact about me is that I'm colorblind. And one of the symptoms of being colorblind is you're also fashion blind. As a kid, I'd dress up in all sorts of wonky colors. My mom would say I look like a clown and then lay out an outfit for me. And I quickly realized that she can't keep doing this forever. And I really wanted a personal stylist. Um, turns out I'm not alone. Colorblind or not, 61% of Americans regularly struggle to find something to wear. And through customer discovery, we learned that over nine out of 10 people that we interviewed would like some kind of styling service or personal stylist but less than one out of 10 can afford a personal stylist and less than two out of 10 are willing to pay for a styling service like our competitors, like Stitch Fix or other uh, subscription box styling services. So we set out on a journey to determine how can we democratize fashion? How can we democratize stylists? And then we settled on pair virtual stylists.
stylist, an artificially intelligent personal stylist that um, allows a user to upload an image of anything in their wardrobe. We visual, the AI visually recognizes it. And after scraping constantly for fashion trends online and user style preferences, we give them outfits based on whatever they take a picture of so they know exactly how to style it. Um, furthermore, if they like an outfit that they see, they simply swipe up and um, we show them exactly what's in that outfit so they can buy it, as well as recommend similar items from their preferred brand and price ranges so they can optimize their style uh, to their own style preferences. Now, um, if you would like to uh, learn more, visit www.pairstylist.com and um, we hope you'll join us on our journey to optimize your style and democratize fashion. Thank you so much. Rohan, you are rad. Thanks, man. I, um, so you, how long have you known that you wanted to kind of work on some kind of venture or come up with an idea? Or was it just a few years ago that you were like, I'm not going to do that? Like, when did this hit you? And what do you have to say for people that are like, no, that's, that's not my thing. I'm not an entrepreneur. I think the first step is that everybody has these great ideas and the idea of being an entrepreneur, you know, everyone's like, oh, that'd be cool. But it's not as complicated as you might think it's more about just finding something that like you're passionate about like I love fashion and I love tech and um, eventually it just kind of came together as an idea and um, I wanted to pursue it as a venture and what kind of happens is you always kind of get held back by like other job offers whatever it is and I think the first step is really just jumping into it other things will come along you form your team you like to do some customer discovery if it doesn't work out you pivot um, the first step is just jumping in. Not You can't do everything that's involved in a venture. You're going to need to find the, I think the number one thing is finding the right people who can do the things that you can't so that um, you uh, will succeed at some point. <laughs> Rohan, I'd like to pick up on that aspect of building a team. How did you build your team for this company? It was actually crazy. I met some of my team members through a business capstone, the business minor capstone. And we took that to uh, the finals of the business minor competition. Then we did NBC together. Two of those people stayed on. I met another one through uh, a class that I did and another co-founder um, just through the startup um, connections I have here at CU through working with IAT, the innovation action team, uh, working with all of you here. And it's just amazing the network, I think, at CU and uh, INE and just the NBC experience that you can get so many mentor connections and everybody here is willing to support each other. You can find people talented in all sorts of things. You can build whatever you want, essentially. You don't have to have the knowledge in your own head. Uh, for, the, for those that are kind of new to the New Venture Challenge, um, first of all, Rohan's underscored, you know, you can find founders in your classes, building things together. Um, but there's a saying in the startup community that your most important first sale in starting a company is talking somebody else into joining your team. And, uh, and ideally talking somebody else who has a great skill set that you can't wait to, <laughs> to work with for joining your team. And so uh, fun to hear that part of it. Ron, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> totally, yeah. Thank you, Rohan. Uh, I also just want to add, like, if you're curious about things like, oh, what is the innovation action team? Those, there's going to be an email dropped uh, later on during the webinar, and you can just shoot that. Any questions you have about whatever sort of communities that have popped up during tonight. Um, but yeah, finally, we have uh, Richard Franklin, whose idea came out of CU's engineering school. They competed in uh, NBC last year, and now this startup company is going through the Innovate Longmont Accelerator. Richard? Give us your pitch. Hi, my name is Richard. I'm a co-founder and marketing specialist at Edboard Technologies. Now, there's a problem across the world right now. Children are being discouraged from joining STEM across racial and gender backgrounds or just because they're not interested. And at Edboard, our vision is to discover and encourage the future generation of STEM. We did this by taking a standard engineering tool called the breadboard and turning it into a gateway tool to encourage kids for a lifetime in STEM. We did this by making a fun, transparent breadboard. We then added story-based lessons that ensured that kids were encouraged and empowered to face the challenges facing STEM today. And we've seen incredible results. Children as young as five are being introduced to engineering concepts that you won't see until college. And we have seen, because of this incredible response, from educators, parents, and organizations. This summer, we ran a Kickstarter that raised over $35,000, and we are working 
with the Intuitive Foundation and the Caruso Family Foundation to bring ed boards to science camps and schools way earlier than we expected. And that has been incredible for us to see the passion that people have for STEM. And right now we are preparing our company to grow and expand. We're always looking for guidance. I'm gonna break in, Richard. I'm gonna break in. That was awesome, thank you. Cool. Trying to stick to the 75 seconds, my friend. Um, Richard, um, with Ed Board, and by the way, uh, many on the call probably have not yet seen your product. This is such a cool, engaging way to, uh, thank you for showing. There it is. Um, teach kids how to work with circuits through a story that is an overlay on these breadboards. Um, and, and Richard, I wanted to highlight that you're part of really the ed tech movement here in terms of doing education at the intersection of, of technology. Um, we just had a sale of an ed tech company this week announced in Boulder, um, the Woot Math team, which has been doing ed tech for algebra, uh, just exited, uh, had, a, had a sale. Uh, congratulations if any of the Woot Math folks are around. But I wanted to ask you a question. What about ed tech have you learned as you're along this journey in terms of, man, I didn't know that it would be like this until we started a company? Uh... What I, you know, what always surprises me is I've never met a person when we bring up our product who's like, oh, that's cute. You know, you never, it's like, everybody's like, holy crap, I want that for my kid. My kid would love this. Or man, I wish I had that as a kid. Yeah, in fact, we had someone at the New Venture Challenge Championships, uh, Dan Caruso, heard what you're doing. He's like, I'm buying $5,000 worth of them now. We're going to donate them, Right. People are literally jumping out to say, I, I love what you're doing that way. Yeah, it's been crazy. <laughs> oh, that, that is cool. That is cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Richard. This is terrific and really appreciate you coming back to share your story. Michael, Thanks. over to you. Cool. Yeah. Once again, uh, just big thanks to those, that three, uh, uh, those three pitches right there. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about some uh, next steps with, uh, with uh, Tara and stuff like that. Awesome, thanks, Michael. Thanks to everybody for pitching. We really appreciate you hanging out. And I know a couple of you hang out until the end so that in case any of the audience has questions for you. I am going to breeze through a lot of information and don't worry if I talk too fast, we've got links we'll send you that you can get all of that information again because I wanna leave plenty of time for what's coming up later um, this evening, which is being able to meet one of our longtime community entrepreneurs who is out changing the world of coding for little kids. Another awesome thing going on here. And we're gonna learn from him because he is the master guru of how to create a good idea. So if you're thinking, how do I create my idea or refine my idea, stay tuned for that. Um, he's going to show you how to do that to take it into the new venture challenge and or beyond new venture out into the world. So first, let's really get into the thick of what is NBC. Key things you're going to be needing here. And remember to keep those questions coming in the Q&A box. And we're going to start utilizing the chat to drop a bunch of links for you to snag and bookmark for later. If you are thinking about getting involved in the NBC, or a lot of you already know that you want to do that. Here is all the info you're gonna need about the program that kicks off tonight. This program kicks off tonight and goes through the middle of April when we have our big competition. What happens during that uh, timeframe? You're gonna be invited to a lot of different events. Um, you are going to have many workshops across campus at your fingertips to help you build out these ideas. As Brad was saying earlier, mentorship and some of the other entrepreneurs are saying is so important. We are going to hook you up with plenty of community mentors and, and industry experts that will help you to be successful. The cool part of this is you are going to be put into a cohort structure. So you and your teammates are going to work alongside other teams that are building out their ideas so that you have some support and people to lean on. What I love about NBC is the fact that in the background with everything that you're doing, you're really, really sprucing up your resume. 
you are helping your job search, maybe internships, the networking that you will do with community members and people across campus. And then of course, in the middle of April, we are going to have a lot of different competitions and then the final championships on April 13th. So let's get into- um, Tara, can I yes, quickly interject please. on this? Jump in. Which is to say, if um, you are interested in the NBC as a participant, um, between October 28th and April 13th, you don't have to do everything that we offer. This is very much a choose your own adventure type opportunity. It's a platform. If it makes sense for you and your team, do it. Other things may not make sense, but we really mobilize resources on the campus and the community for you. Thanks, Tara. No, br brilliant. Um, that is so true. And to kind of keep up to date with what is available and what's going on, you're gonna start seeing a lot of links to our NVC website um, and registration links for your teams put into the chat box. So keep an eye out for that. Now let's go into the details about the competition, right? Look at what's in green right there. We have over $100,000 in cash prizes to give away to teams, to startups, to solo people working on ideas, anybody that's trying to solve a problem out there. Uh, last year, we had 146 different people and or teams compete. That is the largest number to date for NBC. Um, we're gonna make that number bigger this year. So we need everybody coming out of the woodwork, trying to their hand at being an entrepreneur or an innovator. Um, we have more than two dozen winners and prizes and checks to give away uh, throughout the competitions in April. Anywhere from a check that could be a $200 cash check to potentially up to $80,000. So that's the real deal. How do you get started? Now that I've got you excited about some cash money, how do you get started? The list is right here. Subscribe to our email list. Uh, Mallory, I know, is throwing that in the chat box as we speak. Register your team idea or, um, or what you're thinking about doing for NBC. Register that, grab that registration form in the chat box as well. And then start attending the only two really big events that are coming up this year before we go on Christmas break, which Michael will get into in a moment. And then you start building your team or maybe you're going at it alone. Either way works but you're gonna include a lot of mentors on that journey. So we'll start working with mentors and growing your idea and helping you along the way and filling in the blanks. And yes, you'll get the chance to pitch. And pitching has so many different great um, things to it. And when you're learning to do public speaking and you're learning how to tell your story, we will help you along with that so that you can compete to win cash prizes. And then of course, number nine, go off to change the world, right? What I wanna do really quick, and don't forget to grab those links in the chat box is super important. Michael, will you dig in a little bit on number three and, uh, and give us some details on those two events I was talking about? Totally. Yeah, let's get into some of the next steps for everyone. So there's really just two main events coming up before winter break that we really want you at. The first is the Ideas Generator on November 5th, and the second is the Ideas Validator on November 12th. The generator is for all of you that want to craft a cool idea to bring to NBC and maybe beyond. Um, at, that workshop, at that workshop, we're going to help you craft an idea that solves a problem and help you find team members to work on that idea. This is the perfect introductory event where you can all network and find your place within the new venture challenge. Um, just drop the link below so you can bookmark that and uh, register for that as soon as you can. Um, and then the ideas validator event. Um, this is like the one that's near and dear to me is for those of you that have already, you know, you have an idea or you have a company and you've been working on it for some time, but you're really looking for some mentorship and advice. Now, I just want to stress this. This isn't necessarily like, you know, a blown out idea. You might you might be coming just from the ideas generator. But yeah, you've got something to work with. Right. So these community members are going to join you. Um, they're going to bring their expertise to the table and just collaborate with you on really whatever you need. Um, but honestly, both super cool events. I'm going to be at both and anyone interested in the adventure challenge should certainly attend. So, uh, you've got the details, um, you know, let us know what questions you have. I've seen there's a, there's a few already, but yeah, continue adding them, you know, get them all out there. Um, but yeah, Mallory, uh, what do you, what do you have for us so far? 
All righty. So we've got a couple questions coming through in the chat in the Q and A box. Um, one question that we received, uh, Tara, I'll let you take this one, um, is can you um, compete in NVC again if you participated in the past? Uh, it's a great question. And the, uh, the, the answer is absolutely yes. And I already know many entrepreneurs or people going at it that are going to compete again, maybe even for the you. Yeah, Michael, that's you. Um, Michael, how many times have you competed? Uh, yeah, two years and going on three. So Excellent. So I guess there is no limit is what I'm saying to <laughs> how often you want to compete. So yeah, great question. Okay, awesome. I'm increasingly encouraging for those, not everybody here is going to be a sports fan, but you might think about participation in the new venture challenge, not unlike playing for a team here where it's not like it, it's normal that you just play one year with the basketball team, right? It'd be pretty common that you go in as a freshman and, and as a sophomore, you learn a little bit more and junior and senior, you contribute you know, entrepreneurship's the, the same kind of thing where you have an opportunity to get better and learn about this as you go along. So year over year uh, participation is fabulous. Cool. All right. Another question we have received is, um, if I take a gap semester in the spring, can I still compete? Tara? Over. If you take a gap semester in the spring, Yes, I think that's right, Brad, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but. Yeah, we're officially making up rules on the fly here, everybody. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, you know, we, we've got a spirit of inclusion. And if you're part of this CU community, we know that there's a lot of different things going on. Um, if you do that, you know, we'll find a way to make this work. And so the answer is yes. Awesome. That's okay with Tara. <laughs> Good to go. I like it. I like the answer. Okay. We have another question um, from Dyson. As a CU freshman, I really don't have a community around me that I know would be interested in something like this. How would I work on finding a community uh, throughout this pandemic to work with? I mean, Brad's been at this for so long and knows all of the different avenues across campus to get involved in. It's not just New Venture Challenge. I mean, entrepreneurship and more so innovation across campus is everywhere. And I'm new to the CU community, but I'm not new to the Boulder startup community. Right across the street, Canyon, you've got walking down uh, the street, you know, you, you've got so many people that want to help everyone just be the best they can be when people are trying to solve problems. Now more than ever, Brad said it earlier, uh, you know, we're all entrepreneurs now. That's kind of the spirit of Colorado in general, but across campus, even coming in as a new person, um, it is everywhere. And, and I, I think just by getting in touch with one or two people, we can point you in that right direction to build that community. Uh, I see just in the chat while you were talking, Tara, that three freshmen, Farron, Sonia, and Alberto, just all chimed in like, me too, I'm also a freshman. Um, and I'll just say, what a bizarre year for all of us, but especially be coming in as a freshman this year. Um, I think something like the New Venture Challenge, it's pretty compelling you know, to have a, a sense of connectivity. Now, specific to the question, Michael and Tara just teed up two events in November that if you're able to go, you're going to hear ideas that other people are working on. You're going to have a chance to, to share ideas. That's exactly the kind of context in which you may well meet somebody who you might want to team up with. For others, we're going to say, you know, if you're interested in this, you should really think about this class during the spring semester. And you heard Rohan say that was how he ended up meeting some co-founders. So show up to stuff, get involved in some of the classes, and you're going to be surprised at the opportunities that come along. I'll just say one final thing, which is, you know, we are going to need you to tell us what's working and what's not working. And so reach out to Tara and say, hey, I'm a freshman. I'm looking for help. And, you know, this seems to be working. Or I could sure use an event in which I might have a chance to meet people. And we'll do our best to try to mobilize those resources. Awesome. Mallory, can we fit in one more quick question? Yes, we can. Um... Let's see, I'm graduating this um, winter in December, but probably want to stay involved after this year. Can I keep competing after I've graduated? 
Yes, absolutely. Um, after you've graduated, keep competing all you want, because as we can see in the chat box, there are some serious problems to tend to, like Mark bringing up that we need a Tinder for the community. I mean, we need everybody, all hands on deck working on stuff like this. Actually, I'm, I'm making fun, Mark, but it's true. We do need that. Um, so yes, after you graduate, keep, keep going with us all the way. And once you get a little too far after graduation to potentially compete, be a mentor, help other people go through the journey that you've already been through. Awesome. And just for everybody to know too, um, there's been some great uh, conversation happening in the chat. So I'll make sure to save that. And then after the event, when we send a link out to the recording and with some of the links that we've talked about today, I'll make sure to include the chat in there as well. So everyone can start texting each other and sharing their ideas. Um, and yeah, and there are also a couple of questions here that we were not able to get to. So I'll be sure to add those in and follow up with those people after, so. And I think that wraps up questions. Um, so I'd like, again, we added the NBC website in the chat. Um, you can also follow us on social media and email us for more info. All that stuff's in the chat. We'll send it to you again. Um, all right, throwing it back to you, Michael. Cool, yeah, thanks, Mallory. Before we uh, completely wrap things up tonight, I'm very excited to introduce you all to Paul Barbarian, who has been the CEO of Sphero for the past 10 years. And now he's working on other ideas to solve even more problems. He's the master when it comes to building a good idea to take to market and to make a difference. This will really be helpful for you all that don't have an idea yet, for those of you that already do, and for any of you that have been working on a company or idea for the past year or so. Paul wasn't able to join us live tonight, so he recorded himself and sent it our way. Let's queue up Paul and we'll see you back to wrap things up afterwards. Everyone, hey, um, thanks for uh, having me today to talk at the New Venture Challenge. Uh, it's always fun to kind of be able to kick things off and talk about how to pick a business. I'm Paul Barbarian, and no, I'm not in Singapore. I'm actually in my basement. Uh, I don't know if you can see my uh, virtual background, but when the, um, the basement isn't really exciting, so I figured I'd do something here with uh, uh, with a fun virtual background. Anyhow, uh, I'm gonna spend about 15 minutes today talking about how to pick a business. So all of you are kind of like starting to think about this whole entrepreneurial thing. And I've put together a presentation. Um, I've started like eight or nine businesses in my uh, career. Some have gone really well, some have gone public, some have been utter failures. Um, and happy to share my, my story with folks uh, if they're interested after the fact. But um, today I'm gonna just basically share some of my learnings on how I think about new ideas and kind of create a framework for you guys to evaluate. So with that, I am going to start share my screen here with the presentation here. Give me a second. Click, click, click. And here we go. So picking a business idea. So this is my contact information. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me after this if you have any questions. I know it's a condensed time frame today, so only 15 minutes per speaker, so there's not a lot of time for Q&A. But if you put your questions into the chat, um, we can kind of consolidate them, send them out, and I'm, I'm happy to respond. Or you can reach out directly. But if you do, just, just basically say how we met so I kind of have context. Otherwise, I get a whole bunch of random emails. and. Uh, I don't know where they come from. So um, if you want me to respond, just say, hey, you spoke at the new Venture Challenge kickoff on how to pick a business and then I'll have context. All right, so what's the purpose of picking a business? Well, obviously you, you wanna pick a winner, right? Uh, you wanna make some money, like even knowing, you know, businesses are to be profitable. Yes, there are socially responsible businesses and those are all cool. But, um, you know, ultimately businesses have to be self-sustaining and you need to, to make money. So. Uh, you want to make sure that where you're going to put your time, your energy, and your effort, um, you're going to be um, successful. So uh, there's really five things, uh, five core steps we're going to talk about. Um, these are them. You know, it starts off. Um, uh, but if you want, like the 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 cheat sheet, this is it. So let's go in into the first one. Um, so what do I mean by know yourself? A lot of people are going to spend more time with their business than they are going to be spending with their loved ones. Um, you're going to spend almost all every waking moment, especially in the startup phase. And you better be doing something you love and you better be doing something you're good at. 
and you better be doing it where you want to live. Otherwise, you're going to be miserable. So do you want to be, you know, kicking it by the beach, selling, you know, you know, surfboard wax to surfers? Or do you want to be on Wall Street, you know, providing services to uh, financial institutions? Figure out what really drives you and use that as one of the key criteria on how you pick a business. Because if there's a mismatch, you're going to know it so quickly and it's just, it's going to be a failure. You got to do something you're good at. You got to do something you love. So let's go in and start talking about the different types, what I call angles. What is the unique advantage each of these businesses have that uh, create a unique differentiator? Because if you're going to start a business, you just don't want to replicate someone else. You want to have some unique offering or or angle in terms of how you're going to dominate a particular segment of the market. So the first is, is roll up. And I don't talk a lot about this because it's taking a whole bunch of small companies, jamming them to one company, and then you have something big. And a lot of the telecom companies in America today, you know, Verizon, AT&T are a combination of dozens and dozens and dozens of acquisitions. Um, and they combine them together and create one massive national network. You guys are early in your careers. This is something you might do later. Uh, so this may not be the right framework on how to think about a business, but I just wanted to put it out there. The other is a better widget. A lot of you guys are going to come up with something, you know, better, uh, you know, it's a better mousetrap. It's a better, you know, sham wow. It's, uh, you know, a, a better, you know, way to peel potatoes. Uh, a lot of cool ideas and a lot of successes actually come from having an actual better widget. So is that kind of going to be your unique angle? And you can also think about it in terms of services, like I have a better service, like we're gonna just, we're gonna go over the top and be so much high quality. Um, that's another way of, you know, kind of think about things. But a lot of you guys are gonna come up with ideas that fit into here. And once again, I want you to just kind of think of this framework on where, what is a unique kind of positioning of your idea. Um, there's this notion of better, faster, cheaper. They always say choose two, you can't do all three. Um, but uh, this is also a, a fantastic uh, way to kind of start thinking about better, you know, coming up with business ideas and the frameworks around that. Um, you know, you can think of something like a FedEx, right? They were uh, faster. And they were better than the U.S. Postal Service, but they weren't cheaper. But they serviced something that was really important, and it turned into this massive, massive company. Um, so this is a this is another way, uh, and more, most services fall into this category. Um, new approaches, right? You've all witnessed this um, in the course of your lifetime. First, it was from vinyl to CDs, and then it's from CDs to uh, MP3s, and now it's from MP3s to streaming. Um, but you've seen, you know, technology being applied to the old way of doing business. A ton of SaaS-based companies fall into this category where they look at the way things were being done in the past, come up with a new simpler way of doing it and present it to the market. So if you're thinking about a service-based company and you want to apply technology to it, you, you really want to think about well, what, how are they doing it before and how can we do it in the future? Um, and I use music here because you all can relate to that. Um, and then pure invention. Okay, so you're at a in university and some crazy professor, you know, she comes up with the, you know, the next flubber or the next, uh, you know, particle accelerator technique or something like that. Chances are none of you guys are kind of the pure inventors, but you may know people who have pure inventions. Um, typically comes out of university environments, could come out of some corporate research labs. But the challenge here is, these usually take a long time to kind of go from idea to something practical. So I don't think a lot of you guys are gonna come up with stuff that's pure invention. And just because you patent something doesn't mean it's invention. This is something the world has never seen before, not like some clever you know, screwdriver. It is, um, it's pure you know, brilliant ideas, new material sciences kind of fall into this category. And then geography, a lot of people don't think about this, but geography is a fantastic way to kind of build a, around a business idea. Like, hey, it was really successful in the US, let's take it to Europe. You know, obviously McDonald's, um, I think this is Amsterdam or Paris or something, um, put something in a place uh, that was successful and see if you can replicate it in another place. Every gas station is an example of a geography business. Like, well, oh, there's no gas on this corner, we could perhaps sell it. So geography could be a really cool differentiator. So those are just some of the key frameworks, but really try to come up with the simple, like what is really a differentiator for us? And then once you do that, I want you to do this. I want you to do the hard thing first. Like what does that mean? Um, the, what I try to mean here is I want you to try to kill your business, right? 
in the first 24 hours. So think about like your idea, like you're gonna come up with an idea and you go, okay, well, what's the hardest thing? Like if the hardest thing is like, we gotta build an app, that's not hard because a million people have built an app. Think about something that very few people have ever done before in the context of your business and then, a, and then see if you can actually do that, right? Um, it could be the financial metrics. Like, I don't know if there's enough margin in this because we're buying something for a dollar and selling it for a dollar too. Can we, can we have enough volume to actually generate that? Um, so this is typically a point where I have a lot of audience participation where we kind of explore the hard ideas. Um, but since, since we don't have that today, uh, you can put some of your ideas in the chat or email me before, but it, it really takes a little bit of um, experience to figure out what that one hard thing is. But uh, so, for example, if you're trying to do a two-sided marketplace and you said, well, you know, of course, everyone wants to sell their home, but we got to get people to buy homes on the other side. Here, it's a two-sided marketplace for buying and selling homes. Um, then, then you have to decide, is it the supply side or the demand side that is the hard piece? And focus your energy there and like, well, how are we going to solve that? You don't, you don't have to solve it, but you have, to, you have to have confidence that you can solve that hard thing very, very quickly. And if you can't, like if you don't get a lot of confidence around the, your ability to solve that hard thing, like we gotta get a million users before we can make money. Uh, if you don't have a lot of confidence, shut that business idea down and go on to the next one. The whole idea here is to cycle through a whole bunch of um, ideas because I'm pretty sure, not that you suck, but all of your ideas suck. And the reason is, um, unless you start going through a lot of these, you're really not gonna build uh, essentially the, you know, the equivalent of muscle memory, right? So if you want to get in shape and you do one push up, you can't call that uh, being in shape. Uh, you did one push up, but if you did a thousand push ups, well, you're probably in shape. It's the same with business ideas. If you're going to pick a business idea, just don't pick one. Come up with a whole slew of them and pick ideas that you, you know you won't do, but it's a good mental exercise to kind of look at the hard thing, evaluate the economics, do your research, and then focus on it for maybe, you know, you know, a few hours to a day. And so you start building up this experience, right? This capability. Because as I, as I think about um, picking a business idea, you know, volume matters in terms of looking at things. Think about a venture capitalist. They look at thousands and thousands of ideas, but they only invest in 10. Well, as a, if you're picking a business, you should look at a whole bunch of ideas and only pick the one. So if you're just coming up with one idea, statistically speaking, it's a bad one but you got to iterate, iterate and think, okay? So uh, it's a challenge, the homework assignment for you. And then, you know, this is like, a lot of people think you could just search Google and come up with answers. And yeah, there's a lot of information on Google, so I don't want to uh, discourage you using the internet, but if you really are getting deep into an idea, start talking to people, start sharing your idea, start, uh, talking to people who might have been former employees of competitors, you know, call up the ex head of sales of that company that, that you know, is do, did what you want to do and ask them what some of the challenges they faced. And if you say you're a student, if you say you're doing research, people are, and you say you're looking for advice, people are going to help. If you say you're asking for money, you're not going to get a single return phone call. So just, you know, present yourself open, be very transparent, do your research, uh, but talk to people, right? Do your, do your online research, but get out there and talk to real people, talk to customers, talk to users, talk to uh, former employees of folks that you, um, used to work in the industry, um, talk to regulators, talk to whoever might have germane information about your business idea. Because the goal here is to um, actually pick the magical uh, idea, the golden egg, find the, the fantastic business idea amongst a sea of thousands and thousands of ideas. Look, most businesses fail. It's a statistic. Um, I've had more failures than I've had successes. Um, but when the successes come, they're fantastic. They're just, they're over the top. They make up for all of the hard years of not making it happen. Um, and so there's a sense of resilience, but there's also a sense of getting up and sticking to it and trying again and again and again. So if you're going to take one thing out of this presentation, understand that picking a business is an iterative process. It's not, you know, sitting around with some beers and just coming up with the magical idea and you're now the next, you know, Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. Those are great stories and they do happen, but chances are 
you gotta you gotta cycle on a whole bunch of ideas, especially if you have a nice you know domain you know framework of what you want to focus on, as I shared at the beginning. And um, my one last thing here is this. So what is this, right? You can put your answers in the chat section here. See who see who gets it. It's not an O. So it's the other thing that looks like an O. It's a zero. Now, why do I have a zero here? Well, I have this because I want you to all embrace your inner zero. You're all zeros right now. Chances are none of you have $10 million cash in your bank account. Um, you all are at a moment in time in your life where you can take the greatest risk because you don't have that much to lose. As you get uh, older, hold on, my uh, lights go off every uh, 60 minutes. So I gotta turn them on. That's my basement for you, sorry. Okay, uh, real quick, you're all zeros. So embrace your inner zero um, and take a chance because this is the time in your life where if you, if you fail, you can easily pick yourself up. When you got a mortgage and you have uh, kids in college and car payments, you can't go to zero. The, the consequences are too high. So take this moment, be bold, this is the time to really go out and explore and, and, and take all of your learnings and apply them and go into the great wild blue yonder and learn uh, from experience. So with that, I'm gonna leave you again um, with my, uh, my email address. Please reach out. Don't forget to say how we chatted. Thank you, everyone. I hope you had a great, um, you know, I hope you're having a great day of you know, all these different sessions. And um, reach out if I can help. And good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, so appreciative to have Paul with us. That was a great call, Brad. Um, he is incredible to listen to. And I can see from the chat box that everybody is very fond of Paul. Um, what I love is that, uh, you know, Paul talks about do the hardest thing first. And he's talking about in your company or in your idea. But what resonates with me is it is time to do the hardest thing first. This is a moment in history when we have so much that we need to get our hands into. And you all that have attended and hung out with us here tonight, you are doing the hardest thing first by just showing up and being a part of the New Venture Challenge program and learning everything tonight. Michael knows all about that because he's been doing it for a decade. But uh, <laughs> um, so thanks for, thanks for doing the hard thing first. And, um, and I, I love that he says, take a chance because that's what this is about. Take a risk, take a chance. And you can see in the chat box, I love that everybody's sharing their phone numbers. This is all about pulling together as a community within the university and across out into uh, the community as well. So keep sharing contact information with each other and, and we'll go forward and do great things. Definitely bookmark coming to our big two events um, later on this month on the 5th and on the 12th and you can go to the NBC website to find out more details. But before we head out tonight, uh, I do wanna make a very, very special thank you and mention to our NBC Signature Partners. We literally could not do that, do what we do and help you on your journeys and, and do prize money, uh, to be honest, without the help and support of our signature partners, Zayo Group and Anchor Point Foundation. We thank them so much. We also definitely wanna thank all of our innovation and entrepreneurship partners that go with us on this journey uh, with all the initiatives that we have across campus. Uh, we have so much community support that helps make things like New Venture Challenge possible. So I am so thrilled to work with some of you on the ideas that you've thrown in chat all night. I'm thrilled to meet you as we get rolling on this NVC program journey. This is the coolest thing I think you can probably do, start innovating with others outside of what you're doing in your own degree programs. So don't forget, we will share all of the registrations and the links and everything else with you. But if you grabbed those tonight, get started, the sooner the better, because the sooner you get started, the more we can help you be successful going into March and April. Um, I wanna thank Michael for taking time out of his studies to help us tonight. Brad, of course, Mallory, Chris, who's directing behind the scenes. 
Uh, a huge thank you to Brian Bishop, who is a gold mine on campus working for the SRC, running all of our tech in the background tonight, and also to the brave students and alumni that joined us to give their pitches. Lastly, and most importantly, the community that has joined us. We have investors and mentors that we know that are hanging out with us and board members and it's, it's fabulous. We don't, we don't get anywhere without you all. So we're gonna be leaning on you pretty hard going into the new venture challenge this year to bring your expertise. So thanks for joining us, especially there, on a Wednesday night. Could I add one word about that? Yeah, of course. Which relates to Paul Berberian. Um, when I reached out to him to ask whether he'd be willing to do this tonight, it took him about 30 seconds to reply to us to say yes. And that's a credit to Paul, but it's also a statement about the way this community works, which is there's a mantra that's popular called give first. And what it means is we understand that startups and emerging companies are a team sport, that no one goes it alone. And give first means get involved and offer to help others in this community without asking anything for return. Now, it's not pure altruism because when you're part of a community like this, you just sort of trust that benefits will come back to you along the way. You just don't know when and in what form and from whom it's gonna come back. But it's an amazing kind of community when you get involved this way and what Paul did, and we've got so many all-stars from the community who have joined in tonight. Um, please take advantage of it if you get a chance. And if you get part of it, understand that um, it's on you also to give first along the way as we go through this. So thanks for letting me be part of it. Tara and Michael, congratulations on a great event. Uh, back over to you guys. Yeah, Michael, jump in with any last words that you want to share with any entrepreneurs. Otherwise, we're going to thank you all once again for being here. Yeah, I'll just say like one thing. Um, I really want to reinforce that everyone that you've heard about tonight is accessible. Like Paul Barbarian literally like helped my team like through our pitch, like before we before we were competing for some money during the summer and just like, you know, helped us go through it and pull it apart. And, you know, I think that goes that's the same for like everyone that was mentioned. So 100 percent there. Fantastic. Thanks everybody, have a good night. We definitely hope to see all of your names show up uh, joining us on the journey of New Venture Challenge 14 going throughout the year and into next year. Good night.